Um, and so what this um, illustrates is synchronous versus asynchronous. So on the left-hand side, if we submit the queries in a synchronous fashion, and if each query takes five minutes to run, all three of them will take 15 minutes to run because they're being submitted after the first query is done. So query one gets submitted, we wait for its result, then query two gets submitted, then query three gets submitted. On the right-hand side, they all get submitted at the exact same time. So the same five-minute queries running across the environment would take five minutes to run. And obviously, depending on the query, it, it may require different size warehouses to be in place. But again, this is the idea and this is the value proposition ultimately of the cloud and especially of Snowflake. It's this idea of elastic scalability. I have the ability to scale up for five minutes, uh, run my queries asynchronously, and then be, have the ability to scale down. Yeah, and, and you take that, expand it to, you know, maybe a hundred thousand queries, then you're really starting to see like the, the only way I could even mimic this in the in the old world would be to open up tons of sessions, which itself has its own overhead. Um, and instead I can have those queries do, you know, run asynchronously um, and, and you can fire all of those off. And you're really talking about a big difference in, in capacity to scale and really um, uh, using the totality of your compute, which you've already paid for. Again, in many of these cases, this is compute you have paid for um, that you are now um, using to its greatest extent. Yeah, it's um, using so. the multi-threading capability that's on mm -hmm. Snowflake. It's using um, also the elastic scalability to scale up as well as scale horizontally. If you look, and again, we have customers in a variety of industries that have attempted to do these things um, in native tooling uh, using various technologies like Databricks and uh, using Athena in, in AWS, using similar types of things on top of blob objects to operate in that world. The amount of heavy lift, the amount of architecture, the amount of maintenance, the amount of fragility that that introduces to your data pipeline is incredible. Uh, certainly, it's exciting to say my diagram, my enterprise architecture diagram includes 50 different components. But at the end of the day, somebody's <laughs> got to manage it, maintain it, support it. Um, and, and I see some really cool things being architected. Love the, 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 the fact that it's a complex architecture, but we wouldn't be interested if we weren't thinking about how to simplify complexity. Mm -hmm. And this is a perfect example of that. Yeah, you look at some of those architectures of, of stuff, especially outside of the Snowflake world, it is so complex and there's so many moving parts. Um, you know, this is just, it's its so much simpler and it keeps it right within the same uh, data store where it lives. Yeah, we, we've had, you know, I, I wouldn't say arguments, but we've had deep discussions with um, enterprise architects and solution architects around, you know, Blob storage is inexpensive, and I can do all of these things on EC2, or I can do them on, on, on Azure storage. And then you look to see how many things have to come together and then be managed. And what if it changes? And what if it needs to scale differently? The amount of management required around that is, is, is pretty big. Uh, Jared, you and I have talked about anti-fragile for on a number mm -hmm. of different occasions. And especially in our data pipelines, We'd like to build things that are elegant. We'd like to build things that are um, elegant, not just to design, but elegant to use and uh, gracefully extend, as, as mm -hmm. we say, not just, least, not just to modeling. That's right. That's right. And also least amount of orchestration, because yeah. every line of code that you write is baggage. It's, it's mm -hmm. things that have to be understood, managed, and maintained. Um, and so... There may be a little bit of complexity because uh, doing th doing the things that we're about to show has a uh, you need a little bit of Python knowledge, so it's not just SQL, uh, but it is elegant in it in its approach, as you'll see. Hey, folks! Thanks for checking out this cut from our broadcast. To see the full show, click on the link in the video description. Also, check out our learning center, which has white papers, events, live streams, and short explainer videos on a wide range of data management topics. And of course, 
If you like our content, please share it on LinkedIn. That really means a lot to us. Thanks again for checking us out, and we hope to see you in our next broadcast.